Senator Frantz. Thank you, Senator Franz. Thank you, Madam President. You actually saw me tonight. I appreciate that. I did. I looked to my left this time, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I rise in support of the amendment, and uh, Madam President, I would like to point out a few things about uh, this alter alternate budget, and that is that this, this is one that uh, the people of Connecticut who are out there in the real world, in the business world, out there in the jungle, and fighting their competitors, fighting competitors not just within the borders of the state of Connecticut, but also outside throughout the rest of the country and truly internationally. It's a really, really tough business world out there. Uh, I live and I breathe it uh, every day when I'm not here, and I can tell you it's getting tougher and tougher and tougher. This is one that those people who are making business decisions, working at any level within a company, a partnership, can feel very proud of because it's one that really is truly honest and truly honest about our future. If we continue with a business as usual attitude here in Connecticut, which is a very different course than most other states in New England and the rest of the Northeast and certainly many other states throughout the rest of the country, we know for a fact that we're going down a road that isn't going to deliver us a very bright future because when you do have a cost structure that's too big and you have a tax structure in place that is unmanageable, unaffordable in many cases, or so expensive that it drives taxpayers and companies out of the state of Connecticut, then you have an unsustainable situation. And all of those programs uh, that Senator Harp was just talking about and Senator Kane was responding to, there's going to be very little left in the way of resources to take care of those programs. And the people that are truly the most desperate in need will be the biggest sufferers uh, as a result of that. This is one that we can all be proud of. It's one that the middle class can be proud of, and it's not necessarily the one that those who feel that bigger government uh, is a better thing are necessarily going to be proud of. We started with a shared sacrifice approach to the budgeting process here in Connecticut, and if my math is correct, our math is correct, it is roughly 58 percent shared in terms of higher taxes. What we're leaving out of that equation is the fact that taxes have been raised already within the last 18 months in the state of Connecticut significantly. The highest marginal income tax bracket is up 30 percent in the first iteration. This time it's going up another 4 to 5 percent, I believe it is, on top of that. And whether it's affordable or not, it certainly sends out a message that the powers that be up here in Hartford are keenly interested in raising revenues as opposed to doing what most other states have done here successfully, which is to rationalize the spending and the cost structure of their respective states, get things under control so that, in fact, we can have a bright future. Uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you look at um, those numbers again, I think it, it, it comes out to be something like 75 percent in uh, terms of the increased tax burden on um, on the people of Connecticut, the taxpayers in Connecticut. And that, frankly, is not very much of a shared uh, sacrifice uh, budget approach. This is in the underlying bill. The, uh, the alternate uh, budget is one that, uh, in fact, does give us a, a much more reasonable and fair approach, I think, um, going forward. The, um, what, I would like, what I'd like to see is more people from this institution here, this, this particular chamber, uh, spending more time with people out there in the private sector to see how tough it is, to see how difficult it is to deliver those pink slips, how difficult it is to justify hiring someone that they really desperately need to keep their operations going and keeping them, um, keeping them profitable, not necessarily hugely profitable, just barely profitable enough to stay in existence. But they're scared to death to hire people. We have something in the state uh, we all know uh, very well, which is called Sustanet. Uh, whether it was a good intended idea in the beginning, that's a debate for another night, but it's something that carries with it a very nebulous number, an undefined cost uh, with respect to an incremental employee. They're scared to death to hire someone because they don't know what the true cost of having that employee on the payroll will in fact be. The, um, the, uh, as far as uh, getting the support of some of the local uh, business leaders up here uh, for the underlying budget bill. Um, I, I think that the message there, Madam President, was there, as well as the people in, in the Fairfield County business uh, group, the message there was, yes, maybe they'd be willing to pay a little more taxes. 
What was left off in the earlier description of that communication was that there was a condition attached to it. And the condition was, get your act together up there in Hartford. Get your spending under control because it's truly unsustainable. We're business people. We go through these numbers. We go through these exercises every single day of our working lives, and we know what's, what's workable and, and what's not. And the mathematics and our business judgment tell us that this is unsustainable. So if we need a little more in the way of taxes to get through the next year, because we're, we are, in fact, coming through this recession not very quickly, we're still above 9% unemployment, yes, we're willing to pay for it, but please do the right thing and get our costs under control. This budget, this alternate budget in the amendment, addresses exactly what they're concerned about. And that's one of the reasons why I stand in, uh, in favor of it. It's, um, it's a virtuous budget. It's one that uh, stands to grow the economy. It stands to grow jobs uh, in Connecticut. And most importantly, it does guarantee for the longer term, Madam President, a much more steady stream of revenues to the state of Connecticut. So indeed, we will be in a much better position in the future to take care of all of those programs that Senator Harp just talked about, to take care of those people who desperately need us to be able to create the kind of revenues to take care of them, but at a reasonable level. I stand in, in favor of the amendment. Thank you, Madam President.